All right. Uh, welcome back, everybody. So we have been talking about series, which are basically special kinds of sequences, right? How? How are they special kinds of sequences? A series is a sequence of partial sums of a series, right? Uh, of a uh, sequ it's a sequence of partial sums, uh, and uh, so we can we can talk about what it means for a series to converge. And what I want to do today is build on what we talked about last time. So last time we said, oh, okay, how do we tell if a series converges? You know, what if you have a series like the following? 1 over n squared. Well, that's a series. It's a sum of a bunch of terms. Dot, dot, dot. Okay. And so what we mean by a series is, look at this sequence, the sequence of partial sums, and ask, does it converge? Okay. <clears throat> and what are some of the things we talked about last time? How do we test for convergence of a series? Let's just review a little bit. How do we test for convergence of a series? Okay, well, we can compare to things we know. That's right. Uh, and comparison says compare term, term by term to see if it's dominated in some way, right? Uh, but what would you compare to, for instance? What's one, one thing you, that, that's a, one of the big, the big things you compare to? Well, like a series you already know, right? And a series you already know, one of the big ones is the geometric series. You know that that converges. We showed that that converges last time. Uh, so last time we actually did several examples of things where we could actually, by clever comparisons, show that they converged as well. So eventually we showed that the sum of 1 over n to the p converges as long as p is bigger than 1. We actually did that by a very clever comparison, right? But the comparison test itself has its roots in what? The comparison um, methodology. Cauchy criterion, right? The Cauchy criterion for sequences uh, when applied to series gives a Cauchy criterion for series, okay? We just want to know, just uh, want to see if, if we can show if this, the tails are, are bounded, then we're in, in, in very good shape, okay? Okay, great. So that's um, what we did last time. And what I want to do today is to do a few more tests, and these are all ones that you're familiar with, but you perhaps have not yet seen why they are true. Okay, so uh, here's a big one. This one is called the root test. And its, uh, its companion is something called the ratio test. And this is for series. So it says something like the following. If you're given a series, the sum of a sub n, <coughs> Anybody remember how you test using the, the root test, whether a series converges? Let's see, root. What does root refer to? Taking a root, the nth root. Some of you may not have learned this in high school. Who knows? Um, so it says, OK, look at a certain thing. And I will fill in the blank in a minute. Let alpha equal blah. OK, I'm not going to fill this in in a second. Then. Uh, if alpha is less than 1, this series converges. And if alpha is greater than 1, the series diverges. And if alpha equals 1, the test is inconclusive. <coughs> OK, now that, let's see. Does that ring a bell here? What is alpha? Anybody remember? The root test, what, what, what the criterion is? Let's see. It has something to do with the terms. This is the sum of a sub n's. Nth root of a sub n, does that ring a bell? Nth root of a sub n? Yeah, what do you do with that, nth root of a sub n? You just do it for one? No, you look at all of them, and you see if they what? What do you do with all the sequence of a, the nth roots of a sub n's? How, how is alpha related to the nth root of a sub n? It's the limit as n goes to infinity? Well, yeah, that's how you learn it in high school, but it's actually not, not the best way of stating it, because that limit may not exist. 
But here's something that always exists. The limit may not exist, but the limb soup actually always exists. So let's take the limb soup of the nth root of a sub n. This thing always exists, or it might be, you know, possibly infinite, but the point is uh, it can be calculated in the extended reals. Okay? So this is, or you probably don't learn about limb soups in high school, I'm guessing. No. All right. Okay. So let's see why this is true. Why do you think this is true? How do you think the root's going to help us? Taking the nth roots. Give me some intuition here. Why is it that if this, these terms behave like the, uh, let's see, if the nth roots, uh, if, if these terms uh, have the property that you take their nth root, they, that thing approaches some limit and that limit's less than one, then what? What does this behave like? What are you trying to say this thing behaves like? Imagine, suppose this number's alpha. And this thing is kind of like a n is then like alpha to the n, isn't it? Then what does this series look like? Geometric. Excellent. It's geometric. So what do you think we're going to do to show that this thing converges? We're going to make a comparison with the geometric series. Wonderful. OK, so that's our plan. So our proof is by comparison with the geometric series. That's the whole idea. Almost all the good uh, comparisons are ones with a geometric series. So here's what we'll do in the case where alpha is less than 1. So if alpha is less than 1, well, that means that, in fact, I can fix a beta. I'll choose a beta in between. So I'll choose beta between alpha and 1. OK. OK, so what does this mean? If there's a beta between alpha and 1, well, wouldn't you agree that then uh, there is a big N, there's a number. So look, beta is bigger than this limb soup. If beta is bigger than this limb soup, that means there's a point in the sequence beyond which what? All the terms are smaller than beta. Excellent. Wonderful. Yeah, so there is a big N such that little n bigger than big N implies that the nth root of a sub n is uh, less than beta. Okay. Oh, by the way, I, I that a sub n, that really should be a, this really should be an absolute value, right? Because the a n's might be negative. And similarly here. OK. So good. There's a point beyond which all the terms are less than beta. Good. So we're going to compare with a geometric series whose ratio is beta. And now fr from here on out, you can probably see what to do. Well, what is this? OK, this is by the definition of limb soup. OK. But what does this thing mean? This is the same as saying, for this n bigger than n, uh, alpha n in absolute value is less than beta to the n. For little n bigger than big n. Hooray. We're in good shape. That's it, basically. And um, what do you know about beta to the n? It converges. Some of the beta to the n converges. So. That means the sum of the a n's can, uh, uh, that means what? I, I can compare uh, the a n's to the b n's, right? So the sum of the a n's converge as well. Um, so the sum of the a n's uh, converge as well. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the sum of the a n's converge as well. 